We have Jaguars legend Aaron Beasley here in studio, and he was cringing at that last one off the Bud Light drop off line. Fans That's can be harsh. 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 Hey, hey, I was on the other side, so I know what it's like. You know, when you're on the island, people don't realize, you know, you're by yourself. Out well, there. Let, let, <laughs> let's give him a big alumni weekend welcome. 10-10 uh, day, Aaron Beasley back uh, for the alumni weekend, hanging out. You guys had a ton of former Jaguars that were that were here. We'll roll through them, but we're going to spend the next, you know, this segment with you hanging out. Appreciate you dropping in. Big Surce uh, is is MIA, but you are here. So you could have called me earlier. I'd have been here. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> could have done the whole three hours yeah, with us too. I can talk. You're yeah, yeah. You're here and you're ready to go. But just the product, just because we're definitely going to talk about the alumni weekend. But frustrating is all get out for Jaguar fans. What did you think? It is, especially after the Eagles. Debacle, you mm-hmm. know, you know, when you when you know the most precious thing in football is to hold the ball and not make penalties, you know, because this this professional football. I mean, coach, teams are going to take advantage of every yard because every yard is important. Every minute, every second is important out there. And it's like you got to you got to always have that in mind. And it seems like trying to press too much, trying to do too much instead of just playing football and, and like football is about the basics. I always talk like I teach a lot of D backs, and I always tell mm-hmm. them, Michael Jordan, as flashy as he was, he was a master of the fundamentals. Mm-hmm. Yeah, simple, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, and that was and Aaron, I said I said that as we started the show here today that like my biggest takeaway offensively, defensively, playing within the system was a struggle yesterday. But it wasn't week two against the Colts. It wasn't week three against the Chargers. So why, particularly on offense, why do you think it was such a struggle for this team to just stay locked in on, this is what the defense is showing us, this is how we're going to play? Uh, I think one thing that people don't realize, is especially a young quarterback, uh, you know Lovey Smith is a Tampa 2 guy. And if you don't know how to play against Tampa 2, you don't realize that backside guy is reading everything you do. And it's like, it's, it's something that you have to get used to. But at the same time, I mean, it's the mistakes of the penalties. And, you know, just we, we can't do that. I mean, Doug, Doug knows what he's doing. I mean, just go out there and do your job and, and stay within the game. You know, that's the one thing. So people don't realize I was not fast. I only ran like a 4 six, nine. I say four seven. Four, you seven. were a four seven. Guy. I, I was only like a four six guy. Wow. So everything to me was about precision. Yeah. You know, yeah. I couldn't be out there lollygagging. I couldn't have lazy feet. I always had to be like you're all leverage the whole time, every yeah. time. Because yeah, yeah. I'm going against guys that run four two, <laughs> and I run a four seven. I miss. <laughs> We used to call it, they're going to strike up the band on you. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, peace after the game, uh, Marvin Jones kind of mentioned that, um, you know, they took this team lightly. How do you do that in the NFL? If you're a player, how do you take any team, much less a team you, that hasn't won? How do you won? even say that? <laughs> I mean, because we're, we're talking about everybody's All-Americans on everybody's team, you know? So everybody gets paid. They play hard. I mean, if you think about it, they're not a bad team. They're young, just like us. They didn't take us light. Right. I mean, they came to win. You, I mean, you got to protect your home field, too, first yeah. of all, you know. I think we need some more fans out there as well, you know. Bring that energy to these guys because um, sometimes it looks like they're like, man, it, I looked out in the stands. I'm like, man, where's the energy? They were on the butt zone. I, that's probably what it was. I was thinking that too. I was like, I would have been down there too. <laughs> All right, now if you got a if you got a question for Aaron Beasley, Killer Bees, uh, we'll get him to tell a couple old stories. Uh, it, it, it'll make you feel good. Duval needs some feel good on this Modelo Monday, but one has already hit the text line designed by Lifetime Enclosures with a Beasley. You don't miss it. that, do you? Oh, I miss it. You man. definitely miss that. I miss it, man, because you know that's. I grew up, I'm a sports junkie, so it was like everything to me. I played basketball, football, and ran, like, even 10th grade, I ran cross country just because we had a $150 trip to Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out there, I'm out there in a 19 hour relay, you know? Mm-hmm. So I was doing every, everything for basketball. Yeah. So it was like for me, everything, I, I watched everybody. I tried to learn and, and capture everybody's like mental part. I watched tennis in summer. I would sit there and have my own Wimbledon watch parties. Like I was like, I'm a sports junkie. And so like coming down here and doing that kind of stuff, I don't, I don't know if you realize the whole game. I tried to get the crowd into the yeah. game. I did that at West Virginia. It's like 
I'm a fan out there playing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that. And it was like every day, it was like every game out there, I was like, man, this is a movie, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's like I'm out there playing against Jerry Rice. I'm bringing it. <laughs> <laughs> and despite the play on the field from the current team yesterday yeah. here in Jacksonville, I mean, it was a movie having all you guys out there on the field yesterday. And you got the chance to meet with the guys on Saturday, correct me if I'm wrong, too. Yeah. Walk us through kind of alumni weekend for you guys. Okay, so I got here early Thursday to get some golf in with some of my boys. And then, uh, Friday we had a uh, Top Golf that mm-hmm. was pretty cool. I'm I'm not that good at Top Golf. I like real golf. Mm-hmm. And then um, Saturday we uh, we hung out. We went to Baselli's uh, watch party. That was pretty cool. Nice. That was that was very good. I was it was funny. I was sitting right in the same row as Baselli. I could just see the emotions of him like. You know, he was just sitting there, but I took a quick picture. I said, yeah. love you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he was looking all around. He, was, he couldn't even find me. I'm right next to you. <laughs> People may not realize this was the heyday, okay? If you're, a, if you're a young Duval fan and you came up in the 21st century instead of, you know, the, the salad days that these guys enjoyed, uh, Beasley was part of that 62-7 to beatdown to the Miami Dolphins, which you will tell the story coming up here in a second. But those were that that was the Hall of Fame career that Tony Baselli had. You were right there with him, part yeah. of it. Hey, I, I told this story because somebody asked me to tell a story about Baselli, and I was like, I used to hate playing nickel, and I was trying to act like I wasn't blitzing, and he knew I was coming. He acted like I wasn't coming, but he just put those hands on me. It was I just gave up, you know. Ain't <laughs> but it, it, it was great to play with him. I mean, such a leader, you know. Not always the big voice, but like the way he played, the way he carried himself. I mean, he is a true Hall of Famer to me, you know. Because yeah, his career wasn't as long as it could have been, but he was a dominant force. He was one of the best left tackles for a long time, and mm-hmm. you can't deny that. I mean, just injuries sometimes happen, but you think about a Hall of Fame. Football player is more than just a football player. You know what I mean? If you look at the guys that make it, they're like real good dudes. <laughs> you know, right. you got to right. be a good person to get in the Hall of Fame. You can't just be some. They're Eagle Scouts, more times yeah. than not. Yeah. yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's like real good people make it, and real people, good people deserve to make it. All right. So l- let's get back to this game because that's what Jaguar fans right now are most frustrated about. And I can totally appreciate it. Uh, we're celebrating 10-10 day here because this is the we're the conduit. Okay. This is where fans come to to just l- unleash on this football team. <laughs> so they go through the new hire. We just talked about the success that they had. As a team coming out of that game, are you looking uh, at, at your neighbor in the locker saying, we got to do better? H- how do you handle this as a player? I mean, it's – it's, yes, it is a team game, but it's all about the individual, you know. So I always think about you always have to look within yourself first, you know. You got to get in there a little longer, be more focused, watch more film. You know, it's it's all about doing the little things for yourself because every part of that team is a cog, you know. It's like the DBs, the secondary. I mean, each DB is an individual player, but the secondary has to work together. So it's all about everyone refocusing and coming back and – taking it a little more serious, you know, because we have a good team, but we hurt ourselves. I mean, it's obvious the last two games we should have won the last – we should be undefeated. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can add them up you know, for sure. If you look at the mistakes we've made, we should be undefeated. So, Bees, I want, I want your take on Trayvon Walker, the penalty that happened late in the game. A lot of folks saying that if that penalty doesn't happen, does that change the outcome of this one? Um, guys in the locker room said you could have pointed to any number of penalties and that, that could have been the case. But reg- with regards to the number one overall pick, he's a rookie. He's 21 years old. In the locker room, we just played the interview with him, and he was you know, very short, clearly, visibly very frustrated, what do you make of that? Do you, do you say, you know, that's a young guy being immature? Or do you say that's a young guy who cares? I would say he cares, you know, mm-hmm. a guy, you know, you're, you're not out there for yourself when you play, you know, you're out there for the other, other guys, you know, and that's what you play for because we all go through the things together. We can, we get hurt, you know, this is a brotherhood. So it's like he hurt his boys more than it hurt. You know what I'm saying? Right. And that's where you got to look at it. So it's like, I think he cares. He, He's a he's a great player, he and he just wants to win. I mean, he come from the national championship. Mm-hmm. He's a he's a winner. He wants to, he wants to do all things right to win for the team because right. he sacrificed even last year at Georgia the position he played. You know, so mm-hmm. he, he's a team guy, and it's just you know things happen. You don't as a player you don't blame him because 
like throughout a game, we all had a play that we should have made or something. It, it happens every game. We all think like t- even to this day, I only think about the bad plays I ever had. <laughs> <laughs> so, Aaron, you play with Mark Brunell, who was a very nice guy, but also had some dog in him mm-hmm. on game day. Yeah, Trevor Lawrence, very nice guy. We haven't seen that dog yet. Does he need to have that 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 you know that guy that's gonna get gonna get excited, gonna get fired up, gonna get in people's faces, or is that just everybody's different? Yeah, you know, I, it's like. You can go through how many players, everybody's different, you know. I, I, I don't say to do it, change anything, just get tighter, you know, get get more involved in your plays and get you know, that's it looks like some of that was like guesswork, you know. Yeah. Cause like I said, you if you haven't played against that cover too, it's difficult, you know. And and, and like guys up here, like the way Lovey teaches a game, you're those guys are getting collision outside. So you're probably not gonna have those guys in, in, in the in the mm-hmm. seams and all that. Right. So but um I mean, it's just, you know, just keep, it's a long growing process because who is great their first year? Because I, I, I talked to Trevor during the draft last year. I said, man, that was a red shirt year, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, you got to show improvement. He has shown improvement. I mean, but games happen. We're not going to win every game, but like get better next week. Right. Because we got to look forward to keeping, keeping him confident more than anything. Because that's the main thing. Don't be that talky guy. Just be the confident guy that you don't even have to, you don't have to say anything. Your play shows. We're talking with Aaron Beasley, number 21 for your Jacksonville Jaguars. You can hit the text line designed by Lifetime Enclosures at 641-1010, or you can fire up the pop-off line at 207-7071. You can still unleash uh, some frustration on your Jaguars. But pair up what you just said, Bees, with the fact that Doug Peterson said after Trevor turned it over five times, he said he hopes it's just a blip on the radar. Now he's followed that with a two turnover game where he's throwing it into the end zone. That's precious, precious playtime, and obviously it didn't go well. Now, do you have? How do you bring him out of this now after seven turnovers in two games? <laughs> it's such a mental game. I, I always say it's like one of my favorite coaches, um, Coach Gans, mm-hmm. here. He, he, or he, one of his disciples. I played with it in Atlanta. It's 90% brain surgeon, 10% Jason from Friday the 13th. <laughs> I mean, it's all mental, you know. It's, yeah. it's like you have to do it. Like, especially, like, I always kind of talk about my position because it's like I'm always giving ground and mm-hmm. all that stuff. And, like, I, I'm backpedaling while the guys are running at me. And the main thing for me was just always be technically sound and, and, let, your, and, and let your confidence do it, you know, because mm-hmm. I didn't care I was going against a 4-2 guy. I said, my technique's going to be so good, it doesn't matter. Right. You know, mm-hmm. and that's that's what it comes back. It, it, it just got to keep working, keep working, because, like you said, he's 22 years old. But cornerbacks, you guys have to have that, quote, short memory. Mm-hmm. You got to oh. – if, if you give something up, you just got to forget about it. Yeah. Can a quarterback do that like a cornerback? He has to. I mean, because you, you, you can't – I always think about the best quarterbacks are always the even kill guys. You know, the guys that when they make an interception or throw an interception – you don't see them flustered. Mm-hmm. They'll they'll work it out up here on their own. Right. So, bees. Now you're coaching up in New Jersey, PA area. Correct me if I'm wrong. I kind of I don't coach. Cause yeah. This is my problem. I like training guys, but so then, training. Come, then when it comes to coach, I'm like, I want to go to too many games. <laughs> 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 I go to West Virginia games. I'm all over going yeah. to games. I you want you want to be golfing too, like you said, not yeah. that top golf game. So he's like, so hey, so training. You're but, training DBs. Talk about golf. That's. I'm, I'm going to introduce, I haven't started my book yet, but that's going to be my book. I love golf, but I suck. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of us are right, right. right. You're, yeah. right there. You're sitting at the right table with that. With yeah. that, with that. Uh, but, but Beasley, when it comes to, let, let's you know get away a little bit from Trevor Lawrence here. We'll go to your area of expertise. Mm-hmm. Tyson Campbell, Andre Sisco, two young guys in the backfield who have taken a step forward here in 2022, mm-hmm. but we're still seeing, especially with Tyson, will he turn the ball, will he turn his head mm-hmm. to get to the ball? Andre Sisco, sometimes he looks like he's locked in. He has an interception against the Eagles last week. Sometimes we're like, where is he? So what have you seen from those two young guys, and what can we realistically expect when it comes to a defensive back going from year one to year two? I mean, you should you should see some kind of growth at least, but I always say it's always about consistency, you know? Like, I used to always say, and like, a double D, uh, one play at a time, one play. That's just one yeah, play. Donovan just Darius, one play. Yep. Just one play. And that's all we talked about all the time. It was like one play and forget it. And it's like you got to get back to even kill because especially as a D-back, you, you got to think there's guys up in the top watching. They're they're looking at body motions and see. So if you get beat, if you're limping, they might come at you. 
So you got to play. You got to be a good actor out there too. You're like I got beat a couple times, but you never knew I got beat. I was like, sure, I'm gonna get you next time, homie. <laughs> you got to feel that. You really do. You got to have uh, you know the attitude, the belief, and everything that you do. Uh, collectively, it's a fairly young football team, and, and the problem is, is they they've drafted high. They've got a lot of either number one overall picks back to back years, like Trayvon and Trevor, and then they got a lot of other guys that that uh, they're trying to bring along. Do you do you miss a veteran that has the experience that can show you the way if it is as young a football team as this one is? That is a big thing. That's yeah. that's one of the gifts that we had. We had Lagerman, mm-hmm. uh, we had Yurkovich, mm-hmm. uh, Kelvin Pritchard. We had a lot of guys that could like that were on other teams that could come here and bring a different attitude. So we yeah. we were helped a lot in that because we were a young team too. I mean, mm-hmm. we we're our whole our, our who was it, T. Breck, uh, Hardy, mm-hmm. and then myself. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, Chris Hudson was only in his second year. Right. Travis Day. I mean, we were young, but we had great vets. And a lot of, and no, that's the one thing. It was like a lot of it wasn't even about the football. It was just the being together, knowing each other, and building trust. You know what I mean? Because I, I think about, like, I, I tell a lot of guys I train, you know, I, I talk about Emmett Smith's uh, Hall of Fame speech, and he talked about how the Cowboys, it was like mental toughness, you know, focus, and trust. You know, that's mm-hmm. that's what the game is. Yeah. You know, it's like do your job, be that part of the chessboard, do your job consistently, and that's how you win. How do you how do you keep these guys from thinking, here we go again? You know what I mean? Like you talk, it's you know, we, we talk about well, it's one game is unique. Every game's in the NFL, every week's a one game season. You're talking about one play now is what you're talking about. So how do you keep these guys from going off the edge a little bit, confidence wise? Well, I mean, we're still it's a long season, first right. of all. I mean, we got a lot of games left and and maybe it's a blessing this happened early. Cause now we gotta straighten our stuff out and really get in there like like we need to, you know. Doing extra work, doing just doing the, the little things. I, I think it's it's all gonna be a self uh medication. You know right. what I mean? It's like they gotta do they gotta make the fixes within themselves. Each guy. Each guy. Yeah. You know, because what the the game, like I said, is all mental. So, like, if I go out there and I know what I'm doing and I, and I do with my 100 and I can trust him doing his 100, we're good. Because I, I trust Double D. I trust Fernando. You know, we right. Carnell. It's like right. we, we practice together. We watch film together. We we did a lot of things. And, and see, that was another thing. Like, I don't know if they do this. We we were watching film together afterwards. It's like the group, the, the secondary, the linebackers. We did so much together. That, like you see how we're, we react with each other on the field. We're like yeah. best friends, and we haven't seen each other in years. Yeah, you know? exactly. And Carnell's <laughs> another veteran that we're talking about, Carnell Lake. Yeah. All right, so memory lane, just to, just to make Jaguar fan feel a little bit better right now uh, after this bad loss, nine straight to the same team, 62-7 to seven win over the Miami Dolphins. you got to tell the story. If someone hasn't heard this one, it's a good one. Go back to the night before and oh. what happened. <laughs> okay. okay, so – I was telling the story yesterday. It's funny because Dan Marino has seen every coverage known to man. And they played Seattle the week before when Seattle was in the AFC. They played Seattle the week before. And then I went back and watched a couple more games before that. And I was looking at his head. And I was looking at where his eyes were going for, for certain coverages. And what happened was anytime there was a cover three, Dan Marino knows that his guy, you know, in the NFL, guys run routes off of, based off of coverage a lot of times. So mm-hmm. if it's a cover two, they might convert it to a goal. If it's cover three, they'll run a comeback. Well, Dan Marino, anytime he saw that guy go to the middle, he would throw that comeback blind to my side. And I said, Carnell, <laughs> we, we, we talked, we said, I said, yo, take three steps to the post. I'm going to shuffle out of there <laughs> and I'm going to make it look like man. Cause it's, it's funny. I went back and watched it a couple couple weeks ago, and there was like guys on the sideline, on their sideline, like, "Yo, he's open." But Dan saw cover three because Cardell Lake went to the post, and then he took back off over top of me, and I shuffled out of there. He didn't see what we were doing. We set him up. It was a trap. So when I saw that, and then I, I said, "Man," and I'm one of the guys that like I visualize. I'm, you know, I'd be in there, and I, 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 I had. 20 interceptions in college. Right. A lot of it was a visualization because I always believed that you see it, you do it, you know? And I, I, I said it and I went and did it. That's, a, that's all I can say. I was like, I didn't know I was going to get two interceptions, but I said, if I say it and I'm just going to go do it. 
Do but you... bees, that's also work. Like that's work you guys right. did. Mm-hmm. You guys put in that extra work. Right. Choreography. To find, right? I mean, to, to, you, <laughs> you found, tape. Yeah, yeah, watching tape, you found flaws with them. Mm-hmm. That's that's a critical part. Like you were talking about, you, you run four seven, but that was my game. Yeah, that's your game. <laughs> I mean, that's if you think I, I had ten interceptions one year and drop five. I hate to say that, but <laughs> a lot of it was I was never the fastest guy. It's just I just I just trusted myself. You know, you know, some people go play corner. They're just, they're just happy to be out there. I was like, I got to make plays. You know, that's all I ever thought about is get the ball. Like it was funny talking about that. My uh, my old coach who was uh, played for Dick Jerron. Remember Dick Jerron mm-hmm. was a D oh, coordinator. Yeah. So my old coach comes down here, Jerry Jerry uh, Holmes. Mm-hmm. So when when I was at West Virginia, I would wear num- number ninety one. I would wear number sixty four. I would wear number seventy. I'd be out there every day. It was a game. I was dressed. I had new socks every day. <laughs> my my equipment manager hated me so bad because I cut all the holes out my socks before they had all these bands. I was cutting socks off and wearing them every day at practice. And <laughs> In, in Don Nealon's uh, autobiography, he said, I've never seen anybody love practice like Beasley. <laughs> so it was like every day was, it was like the best day of my life. So it's like I take that, still that live by that motto. Every day is the best day of my life. And I would practice like that. And I said, what happened, I played as a true freshman. All the other guys were like four stars and five stars. I was just some unknown guy from Pottstown, Pennsylvania. I started as a true freshman just because I was a wild man. <laughs> I didn't know how you'd have They no need technique. that in West Virginia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but you bring up a really good point, Beasley, about, about tape, about watching film, because that has been one of the knocks, not just on Trevor Lawrence, but on a lot of these young cats here in Jacksonville, that maybe last year the biggest flaw of the era that was Urban Meyer mm-hmm. was that they didn't learn how to study. They didn't mm-hmm. learn how to watch film. Do you feel like with the guys that you train that this next generation even knows how to study film? Is that something that you got you're getting into earlier? Um, I, I, it's tough because, like, our area is a little different. You know, we're not like Texas and Georgia where they got hundred thousand dollar coaches. You know, a lot of our coaches are teachers, so it's not the same depending on the region you're at. You know, but. Um, like the guys that I see in the Philly area, there's a lot of a uh, 707 program. So mm-hmm. it's like they at least they're out there getting the reps, you know, because we, we talk about some things where like a, a pop Warner football player may take 100 reps to master something. And then like it, it keeps getting lower as you get, you know, higher mm-hmm. level. But, you know, everything's about repetition and, you know, just going out there and doing it, you know, because it's. It's funny. I, I, I tell this people. Remember, I ran cross country. I was all yeah. about basketball. Yeah. So Lawrence Wright, who played it for the Florida Gators, yeah. is yeah. one of my best friends. Lawrence Wright came to Valley Forge Military, and he was the number one safety in the country. And he he like took me under his wing. I said, "Man, that's how y'all play football down there." <laughs> I was like, he was doing all the drills. I'm like, so we man used to seeing us and and I went to a post grad school, you know. So we'd be after practice six o'clock, no lights have our cars, somebody would park their car and turn mm-hmm. the lights for us, man, and we would work. And he showed me how to play football, and I give him all that credit. Well, I, I, listen, get, I, get, I, I get emotional. I, That's my dude, man. I love it. All right, now listen, we're going to make you stick one more segment mm-hmm. because you got to tell everybody what else is happening just okay. as far as your VR world and all that kind of stuff. And uh, and we'll do that coming up. Don't forget, pop-off line, open for business, 207 7071 a Modella Monday. You either celebrate or commiserate with a Modella. Call 207 7071 70, 71. It's XL Primetime.